Terrell here and I'm back again with another review this time for Walker Independence which is going to be premiering on October the 6th on the CW and I know what you're saying like are they doing a prequel series to the Walker that just came out like two years ago yeah they're doing a prequel series I I, I can't believe it either like um you know I guess fans really really like the Walker series uh I personally never watched uh the Walker series with Jared Pilecki myself kind of maybe want to go back and watch a little bit at now after watching this uh but like i said uh, this is the prequel series that's set in the 1800s so this is about uh you know 150 plus years uh before we come into the uh the walker series um that we with jerry pad like it's on there who's also an executive producer on this show so you know one of the reasons you know that this show got made um, and of course, you know, the fans are craving for it. Um, so here we go. So let me let me give you a little bit uh, detail about the show, right? So the show is starring, uh, mainly featuring Abby Walker, whose husband is uh, is murdered right before her eyes, uh, right in cold blood, uh, you know, as they're trying to get to the town of Independence where her husband is supposed to be the new sheriff, right? Um, and he gets murdered and of course, you know, the guy shoots at her, shoots at her too, who he thinks, you know, he tries to take her out as well. Um, but, you know, she winds up surviving. And, you know, of course, you know, not really, not knowing who he is, didn't see his face or anything like that, all that she can go off. So pretty much like the story is pretty much like, as far as the first season right now, of what what we first concerned is, is covering her kind of revenge story um and i've been able to watch the first two episodes so i kind of got like a gauge of like what the show was going to be about and where it kind of what it could be and where it's going um so like i said that's the that's pretty much the the general setup of the show right like that you know revenge story she see her husband gets killed let's go and get some revenge that's that's where we're going um let's talk about the cast the cast is com freaking completely diverse um, we talk in Native American, Asian, white, black, everything in this in this town that you could think of that you normally wouldn't see in a Western. And I think this show does a really, really good job of modernizing that and, and, and giving you characters that you can see yourself. You can see yourself as the as a potentially a sheriff, um, especially now after seeing movies like Harder They Fall and stuff like that. You definitely get a little bit more uh, diversity. Uh, which you would not ever see in a Tom P show that's supposed to be set in the 1800s. You might see one black guy, he damn sure was not holding a gun in a town called Independence. I can tell you that much. So the CW and the, and the, the, the producers um, casting, everybody does a really good job of making sure that there is some diversity on screen and you get a little bit of everything whatsoever. Like I said, let's go into the cast, right? Get a little bit of... Uh, we got Catherine McNamara, who you probably know from shows such as Arrow. Um, she played uh, Mia Smoke on there. She was just on, just on there because, like I said, CW definitely reuses actors. That's what they do. I feel like if you get a CW contract, then you're you're definitely uh, you know on another CW show. And I feel like that's the same with most networks, right? Like you, you usually get a show on one, and then you you get you usually wind up somewhere else. But she comes on here. She's playing Abby Walker. Um, from you know what I can see so far, um, she's doing a really good job of playing the widowed wife, uh, looking out for revenge, um, who's put in various situations throughout these couple episodes, where you know she's completely uncomfortable and has to make choices to figure out a way to catch her husband's killer, I had to figure out a way to to catch him or potentially kill him. So, like I said, Catherine McNamara does a really good job as lead of abby walker um definitely definitely loving it here uh we have uh greg Havenison. i feel like i said that right he plays uh jared davison jeff davison the the, sh the sheriff of the town he was also in the mist um he does a really good job of the shady sheriff who just comes into town and, and does his thing so we get a, li a little bit of that here uh we got justin johnson who was playing the uh native american character uh cortez um, he was uh, in Lucifer in 911. Uh, so he has quite the diverse uh, background here. Um, like I said, I mean, they've grabbed act actors from everywhere. Um, it's not like your typical Native American kind of like racist role leader. Like, no, he's literally like, he is a tracker in the show, but he's helping the sheriff. Um, he, he's not playing like, uh, I don't feel like he's playing like a sidekick gig or 
you know, anything like that. He, he definitely um, d pulls his weight in this show, too, as one of the members of the cast. Uh, we got Katie Finley, who plays Kate. Um, she is uh, one of the women of the local uh, women of the night house. Uh, and she is the first person that um, Abby comes across. Abigail comes across as she comes to town and helps her to take care of everything that's that's being done here. You know, it's the first helping hand that she has. And, you know, she's able to help her with any issues or whatever she, she may have. Uh, so she's a pretty cool character in the show. Um, she's also from Man Seek Woman, if you've ever seen that. Uh, Matt Barr, who plays Hoyt Rollins, you're probably familiar with him because he just played Hoyt Rollins in the previous uh, Walker show, if you guys aren't familiar. So he's pretty much playing his great, 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 great grandfather with the same name, which cool. He's able to come back and do, um, you know, the version of his character, another version of his character. And you get a little bit more screen time of him than you previously would have gotten in the original Walker ser or the Walker series in the CW, not original Walker, Chuck Norris, but you know what I mean. Uh, but yeah, he does a really good job. The charming, you know, pretty boy coming to town. You know, he's a bank robber. He's a grifter. You know, he's coming around. He's robbing people. His first, of course, his first uh, introduction is him robbing Abby for her wedding ring, right? So, but no, he's cool. I, I really like his character in the show. Uh, you know, you can tell that he he's really nice on the guns. Um, he's a really good gunslinger, but he's holding back because, you know, he, he doesn't want the heat. Um, but I really like his character in this. Uh, again, it's another reason, like I said, I want to go back and try to watch the Walker show because it's really caught my attention. So I uh, definitely want to see his character in there. Um, we have, a, uh, you know, I see that we had uh, Mark Shepard in there, if you're more familiar. Um, he plays the local um, town. Uh, he plays the guy who owns the... Uh, the bar and you know the women in the night house i don't say whorehouse uh but he owns it pretty much all that he's the guy that owns a lot of the businesses around there and stuff like that uh, if you remember him he played crowley in uh supernatural so again like i said reused uh actors in the show um <laughs> which is not a bad thing right like you know like you say if, you, if you're, you're gonna get familiar faces because that's what's gonna grab a lot of people back to your show if they see somebody they like or somebody they know from a previous thing then this is what it is and i can see that you know being the case with matt Barr, who played hoyt rollins because people probably really really like this character and you know wanted to see more of him um you know from the from the previous so this gives him a, a lot more opportunity to be able to flex his acting muscles here and give you a little bit more of what you didn't get in the walker show on the cw so what we can go into, like I said, just just for off the first two episodes of the show. Um, like I said, I've never seen Walker on, on CW, but just going off the strength of this, I can say it's cool. I, I really like the with like the mystery. Not I won't say the mystery, but like the the how are they gonna find out? You know, how are they gonna find out? How are they gonna get away with getting the guy they suspect to be the killer of Abigail's husband? Um, because it becomes like an ensemble a, ensemble show where a lot of the cast are. You know of course working with abigail to you know find out what she needs and for her to get back on her feet and what's the next step that she's going to take to catch the man who she suspects may have killed her husband right um like i said really really diverse cast um and like i said i <laughs> only on my only i feel like my only con with it is i wish it was a bigger town like i wish there was more because i feel like with a set like this like you're kind of limited to what you can do it's only but so much in this town of independence it's not as big as you would think it would think it is but that could be first couple episodes maybe it'll expand maybe you know whatever but just from the oversight that they show when when she's on top of the hill when she's looking on town it doesn't look that big to me so you know I, I think to myself you know with a town this small how much could you possibly do like how many episodes could you do and then you know once you catch the guy that killed your husband then what where, where do we go from here um the yeah, it's just kind of concerning there um good like i said good casting all around i feel like the cast is amazing here everybody does a good job um my only really issue with it is like i just i kind of don't see where the longevity of this show would go to constitute a, a, a whole first season um and also the music that it's kind of like modern music and if they're trying to set a western in the 1800s now i get it of course it's like this probably be like a modernized western but the music just doesn't really add up for me um, you know, it doesn't match the what I see on scene. It doesn't feel westerny, uh, especially if you're gonna set this in 1800. It just doesn't give me that feel that it's a western. At least give me like a remix western song or something like that. But 
a lot of it just feels like modern TV music to me. It doesn't it doesn't really give me Western vibes. Um, but other than that, I mean, like I said, just solid cast. Uh, I don't really uh, get enough episodes, see where it's going. Um, I'm not sure if this will be a show that I would continue to watch just because, like, you know, I'm not sure where it's going to go CW-wise and going forward. But other than that, I mean, if you're a fan of The Walker Show, I, I definitely recommend jumping in to watch this uh, this this prequel show that's, that's set in the 1800s. Uh, other than that, uh, like I said, check it out. It's coming out October the 6th. Um, like I said, watch the first two episodes. So far, so it's pretty solid. Um, I, like I said, I'm not sure for me if I'm going to continue to watch it going forward. Um, maybe maybe I feel different after I go back and watch the Walker Show on CW. Maybe, maybe that'll influence my decision a little bit more as far as uh, me liking this. You know what I mean? That's probably why this happened in the first place. There's a fan following, so there's got to be a reason why they decided to do this, right? But, that's it. Check it out. October 6th on CW. Let me know what you guys think. Leave, leave a comment below. Thanks.